Good morning, everyone. Today we are going to deal with the topic of rule of anesthesiologist in cardiac cath lab and interventional procedures. I'm Dr. Lavan Young, Assistant Professor in the Department of Anesthesiology, Clinics, Clinics, Narayana Institute of Medical Sciences, Pondicherry. So if, if this topic can be learned in headings like catheterization lab setup and cath lab and the other patient, pediatric patient, conclusion and preferences. So cath lab setup will be room. What is the room setup? That it is electrical safety and radiation exposure. Cath lab of the adult patient include history, patient preparation, procedure of catheterization, anticoagulation, diagnostic catheterization, interventional catheterization. Cardiac cath lab for pediatric patients will be history, indication, contraindication, demands of the procedure, anesthetic man management, conclusion, and preferences. Cath lab setup all interventional and diagnostic suits have a control station, central monitoring suit with the patient care area. So the control room is fully functional computer workstation that allows the interventionalist to control basic fluoroscopic manuals, equipment capable of digital video recording and editing, patient monitoring, computer record keeping, delivering high, higher dose radiation at the time of radio contrast injection if needed. The patient care should be narrow mobile OT tables or beds surrounded by very huge image incense spirals, cameras, and state equipment every day. So the central monitoring should, should be ideally lined, lead lined walls and lead lined glass separating from the individual patient care areas. Centralization of hemodynamic monitors, arterial blood gas analyzers. Uh, activated clock time monitoring, x ray controls should be there. Voice communication with physician in patient care area. Patient care area should be large enough to accommodate a single plane arm, C arm, biplane C arm, resuscitation equipment, anesthetic equipment, uh, ventilator, and IABP machines, etc. Electrical safety will be primary safe, primary electrical system should be there present. All equipment should be attached to the patient, should be electrically isolated. EP potential hardware grounding system should be present. Periodic checkup for leakages of current. And there should be a radiation exposure. Very huge. So, hazards of radiation exposure will be thermal necrosis, operation, cell injury, mutation, cell death, leukemia, bone cancer, birth defects, etc. So, there is a radiation safety program at the centers for disease control and prevention, which was developed in 1989. All, according to this, all radiation should be alarm as low as reasonably achievable. Any radiation of more than any radiation dose of more than one point five rem to whole volume or 1800 rem to extremities in four months is harmful. Total radiation exposure of the fetus for the gestation period should not be more than 500 rems. So, how to calculate it is calculated as Ronwin equivalent mass unit of observed dose. So one rem is equal to radiation absorbed dose rad into weighing factor variable. One rad is equal to amount of radiation that will deposit 0.01 joule of energy in one kg of material. For X-rays, weighing factor is one. So one rem is equal to one rad. One chest X-ray is 40 rems, and nuclear medicine it is four milli uh, rems. Natural and environmental sources, 360 rems per year. In the end, geography is uh, 10 times more exposure than the fluoroscopy. The main principles of personal safety will be maximum distance and minimum exposure time and the maximum shielding time. These three are the basic principles which are used for the personal safety with the radiation exposure. 
so there should be a maximum distance from the DM or the radiation uh, devices and there should be a minimum exposure time and there should be a maximum shielding. Essential will be provided in the form of lead atoms with X-ray attenuation factor of 50 per 0.5 millimeter mm of lead. There will be a thyroid shielding, there will be eye protection and the dosimeter badge. Adult cardiac catheterization was first developed by 1929 by Kirkman. In 1930, Dewey cardiac output measurement. In 1941, Andre Thomas, the right heart catheterization. Zimmerman, in 1950, arterial catheterization. 1962, Richard Adams, primary synangiography. First PTCA was done by Andrea Gutenberg. Patient preparations. There will be an identification of high risk patients. So, who are all the high risk patients included in our list? There are higher New York Heart Association players, LNCR law, or vascular disease, or valvular heart diseases, and coronary artery diseases. Projection fraction is less than 30%. And uh, severe renal insufficiency, insulin dependent diabetes mellitus, advanced peripheral vascular disease and peripheral vascular disease, and severe pulmonary insufficiency. There should be a screening for consent MI, lip and disturbed heart failure, arrhythmias, immune hypertension, diabetes mellitus, lung pathology, renal insufficiency, or coagulation defects, or anemia. For drugs, if the patient is on multiple drugs, antihypertensives should be continued. Diuretics should be stored. Oral antipoagulants stored 48 to 72 days prior. Aspirin is continued. The parent should be stored for four hours prior to gas. If, um, but if in unstable angina, it should be continued. Contrast allergy. For cardiovascular imaging, there are two types of contrast. They may be ionic or non-ionic. Ionic include sodium triad, ditriazoate, and ethylamide, and angiovist, hepagne, etc. Non-ionic will be omnipac, iohexol, isobium, icomedol, opitre, Ioversal, etc. So there are certain disadvantages between ionic and non ionic uh, contrast agents used. Ionic agents' uh, disadvantages include the cause transient heart blocks, QT and QRS prolongations, depressions of left ventricular functions and hypotension, there may be severe anticoagulant and antiplatelet effects or more pronounced. Iodine content varies in different agents, uh, which may be unreliable. Ionic agents will cause more of nausea and vomiting and patient discomfort. Non-ionic agents, it is 10 times costlier than the ionic agents, so it is a little safer, but it is very costly. Renal insufficiency can occur, which is dose related more with diabetes mellitus and renal insufficiency. All radio contrast media can cause erythrocyte dehydration, which reduces cell pliability, which finally decreases the flow in microcirculation. Diuretic with renal dopamine, 3 microgram per kg per minute. Or phenol of 0.1 to 0.2 microgram per kg per minute, and mannitol of 0.5 to 1 gram per kg can be used as post op post op to maintain renal perfusion. And for non allergic allergies, prophylaxis of prednisone 50 milligrams per kg, uh, 0 hour, 7 hour, and 1 hour before the procedures. Diapin had remained of uh, 50 milligrams IM one hour before the procedure. 
and 200 milligrams of hydrocortisone IV immediately and repeated every four hours. Every four hours until procedure is completed with diphenhydramine hydromine 500 milligrams have been given before the procedure. When an is able with controlled ventilation should be done, the patient is supplied with 100% oxygen. For IV and administer IV adrenaline on 1 milligrams every 2 to 5 minutes. And the adequate fluid should be given. Anticoagulation, protein hepatization, 5,000 units is given. Temperature hepatization, 5, protein 5,000 units plus. Mm, and bolus prior with an additional bolus dose of 3000 units after catheter insertion. And the protein reversal is calculated with the half of 30 minutes. Procedure There should be a thorough explanation of risks and benefits. Consent should be taken. Adequate fasting in the milk or oral status should be maintained for six, eight, six to eight hours. Monitoring should be standard ECG lead, 5 lead ECG monitor and recover pre pressure and 2 ECGs with uh, pulse oximeter, left heart catheterization. Two approaches brachial and femoral artery catheterizations. It is time consuming, higher it is associated with higher complication, less bleeding. Uh, Easier in patients with aortic sclerosis or clock tissue problem. Easier in patients with femoral or abdominal aortic surgeries of the after six months of duration. Femoral artery catheterization. It is faster, less complicated, associated with aortic regurgitation, more chances of formation of aortic venous malformations, and increased incidence of cholesterol emboli. Stones catheter is used, which is inhaled to avoid intramyocardial injection of agent and subsequent pericardial tamponade. It has a quick needle, AJ wire, and standard sheets with hemostatic values and dilators. Right heart catheterization. Indication. It is not indicated in all procedure. Significant valvular pathology, suspected intracardiaction, acute infarct, distance between free wall and septal rupture, evaluate heart, heart functions, evaluate pulmonary hypertension, severe pulmonary diseases, evaluate pericardial diseases, pre transplant assessments, biobrachial or femoral vein is used, cephalic vein is avoided. Complications. Of left heart catheterization, sudden cardiac death, sudden um, myocardial infarction, ventricular fibrillation, ventricular tachycardia, cardiac perfusion, stroke, peripheral embolism, it may be any thrombus or cholesterol. Herkes has taken and Bobillard in their study, they have reported the very rare. Complications of left heart catheterization, which include transient global amnesia, prosthetic valve occlusion, and acute pancreatitis. Vascular injuries may lead to pseudoaneurysm, AV fistula, and emboli. Complications of right heart catheterization. Conduction abnormalities include right heart bundle branch block, um, congestive complete heart arrhythmias. Um, valvular damage, perforation, PA rupture, pulmonary infarction, balloon rupture, or air embolism. After completion, pressure should be applied for 20 to 30 minutes. Obese patients, pseudoaneurysm may be very common. Atrial and venous sheets should be removed at the same time. Um, pulse and BP monitoring for 4 hours, bed rest for extra 12 hours. Diagnostic catheterization indications. It includes coronary artery disease, which is unstable angina, post infarction angina, angina refractory to medication, typical chest pain with uh, negative diagnostic tests, strong, strongly positive excess tolerance tests, which is early positive, um, ischemia in more than five leads, 
hypotension, ischemia for more than six minutes, positive post infarction, red blood test. So, cardiac coronary artery disease, which includes uh, all these uh, conditions of unstable angina, post infarction angina, angina refractory to medications, typical chest pain with um, negative diagnostic test and then a refractory to any type of medication and strongly positive excise tolerance test which is very early positive and ischemia in more than five leads, ischemia for more than six minutes, hypotension, post, uh, positive post uh, infarction pregnant test. And there may be bone motion testing, which include the echo or radio nucleus, which is which shows a decrease in overall ejection fraction and multiple or large areas of new bone motion abnormalities. Myocardial percussion test, which increase, which uh, reflects increased lung uptake or decreased in forward cardiac output or there may be large areas of ischemic myocardium, positive pre-op, dobutamine stress test. All these are indications of cardiac catheterization. Valvular heart disease, which is aortic stenosis with syncope, chest pain or congestive heart failure, aortic insufficiency with progressive heart failure, mitral regurgitation or mitral stenosis with progressive congestive heart failure, acute orthopnea or pulmonary edema, acute myocardial infarction or ventricular septal defects, progressive left ventricular dysfunction with regurgitation mutilations which uh, affect the, which decrease the left ventricular function there will be a chamber dilatation with exercise, radionuclear uh, ventriculography, and uh, any post infarction myo mitral regurgitation. The adult, uh, adult uh, catheterization include atrial septal defects, post-infarction ventricular septal defects, catheter confirmation of echo, or any coaptation of iota, and the contraindications of catheterization will be unstable symptoms or very recent MI, suspected uh, left main uh, coronary artery block, Significant uh, left ventricular dysfunctions, significant ventricular arrhythmias, significant coronary heart failure, and just to heart failure, aortic stenosis or mechanical prosthetic valve, congenital cardiac myopathy or restrictive cardiac myopathy or hypertrophic obstructive cardiac myopathy, constrictive or effusive pericarditis. Pulmonary hypertension, severe or uncontrolled systemic hypertension, infective endocarditis, coagulation disorders, significant medical disorders, transplant patient, PTCA, post, post uh, PTCA, which was then one month duration, kinotic or congenital heart disease, patients living too far away. Left to right shunts are common in others. In this, 0.5 to 1 ml of blood is withdrawn at the following places. High and low, superior vena cava, High and low inferior vena cava, high, mid, and low right atrium, right ventricular apex and outflow tract, main pulmonary artery, 
right and left pulmonary artery. After collecting all the blood from different uh, regions, a setup or step down in oxygen saturation indicates the levels at which the shunt is there. It, do, it shows the flow between systemic and pulmonary and are calculated by the PITS principle. The, uh, the shunt, shunt is calculated, the shunt difference is calculated by the arterial oxygen saturation to the venous oxygen saturation in systemic to that in pulmonary. So it is calculated by the fifth principle. The formula given is QP by QS is saturation of arterial oxygen minus venous, uh, venous oxygen saturation uh, systemic, systemically to the uh, difference in the uh, pulmonary venous oxygen saturation to the pulmonary arterial oxygen saturation. Uh, this is this is shown as QP by QS. If QP by QS shunt is more than shunt difference is more than two, patients will require surgery. And if the QP by QS is less than 1.5, surgery is not required. Hemodynamic measurements which are done are pressure, flow, resistance. Um, pressures, what are the pressures we can uh, read is right heart pressures, central venous pressure, right atrial pressure, pulmonary arterial pressure, pulmonary capillary wedge pressure, left heart pressures include left atrial pressure, left ventricular pressure, aortic and peripheral aortic pressures and the peripheral pressures. Cardiac output is measured by thermodilution technique. Cardiac output is given by the formula of this. And uh, systemic vascular resistance and pulmonary vascular resistance is uh, calculated. Systemic vascular resistance is the uh, difference in mean arterial pressure to the right atrial pressure um, divided by cardiac output. And the pulmonary vascular resistance is mean uh, pulmonary arterial pressure uh, to the difference of pulmonary capillary wedge pressure divided by cardiac output, which gives systemic vascular resistance and pulmonary vascular resistance respectively. And what are the normal values you find? Right atrium is uh, 0 to 8 millimeters of mercury. Right ventricle is 20 to 30 millimeters of mercury. Pulmonary artery is 20 to 30 millimeters of mercury. Left ventricle is 100 to 140 millimeters of mercury. Peripheral pressures will be 100 to 140 millimeters of mercury. Cardiac output will be 4.5 to 7 liters per minute. Cardiac index will be 2.5 to 4.2 liters per minute per meter square. Oxygen consumption index will be 100 to 150 ml per minute per meter square. Atrial venous oxygen differentiation will be 3 to 5 ml of oxygen per 100 ml. Systemic vascular resistance is 900 to 1500 units. And the systemic vascular resistance index will be 1700 to 2600 units per meter square. Pulmonary vascular resistance will be 0.5 to 1.5 or 40 to 100 units. Pulmonary vascular resistance index will be 70 to 180 units per meter square. Pulmonary vascular resistance to systemic vascular resistance, usually it should be less than. Uh, less than 0.15. Valvular pathology. As the flow increases across the stenosis, there will be a pressure drop across it. So the valve area is usually calculated with the formula of cardiac output divided by uh, 
flow rate into heart rate divided by 44.3 into constant into the pressure difference where c is the orifice con constant for aortic it is taken as 1 for mitral it is taken as 0.85 and for tricuspid, it is taken as 0.7. Ejection fraction. A uh, single plane 30 degrees right axis oblique, or by plane 60 degrees left axis oblique, and 30 degrees right axis oblique. There should be 30 to 50 ml of contrast with, uh, with injection rates. Mm, of 10 to 15 millimeter mill per second recorded on a semi-trim at 30 to 60 frames per second. Absence of extra systolics. There should be absence of extra systolics. Absence of extra systolics. Ejection fraction is the difference of uh, end diastolic volume to the end systolic volume divided by end diastolic volume. So it is calculated as the end diastolic volume to the end systolic volume divided by end diastolic volume. Frictional wall motion abnormalities. RAO and LAO projections are usually done for this. And O indicates the normal position at least. O is zero. Zero is there is no regional ball motion abnormality. Grade one is mild hypophysis. Grade two is moderate hypophysis. Grade three is severe hypophysis. Grade four is echinosis. Grade five is dyskinesis. Regurgitant lesions are also classified from grade one to group four. Mitral valve, left ventricular angiography. Okay. Grade one is contrast diet layers from left atrium with each beat. And grade four is left atrium densely pacifies after one beat with reflex in pulmonary veins. Aortic valve aortography. Grade one is transient filling of left ventricle cavity by contrast clearing after every beat. Grade four is contrast in left ventricle and aorta with delayed clearance. Coronary arteriography. It is useful to study about the anatomy of the heart, anomalies of the heart, degrees of stenosis, and core dynamics. Free of fluids and drug can influence the results. Fasting may decrease the filling pressures. Fluid status. Um, renal may be important in renal insufficiency patients. With health medications, it should not be over sedated or under sedated to prevent hypoxia. Catheter induced coronary spasm or mitral regurgitation. Interventional catheterization, PTCA. What are the indications of PTCA? Unstable angina post myocardial infarction angina, angina refractory to treatment, acute myocardial infarction with cardiogenic shock, contraindication to thrombolysis, diagnostic test positive, diagnostic tests are positive. Size of the balloon should be appropriate. Duration of the inflation should be 60 to 120 seconds. Uh, it should be at, and the pressure should be 10 to 12 atmospheres. Frequency should be more than three per lesion. And heparin should be and also activated clotting time of more than 300 seconds. 
protamin was not given free of aspirin started complications restenosis reduction in 50% of diameter and 0.72 mm uh, in 3 to 6 months of post PTCA uh, there may be a resection of intima propagation of resection coronary artery spasm emergency surgeries insert uh, intraaortic balloon pump or uh, PSA at the expense of ischemic time. If insufficiency is mild, time can be bought to put an arterial line and uh, PSA, pulmonary arterial catheterization. In separmized neckline should be tried with caution. If in cardiopulmonary arrest, resuscitation should be established as soon as possible. A good IV access and a 5 lead ECG monitoring and a functioning NIV pickup should be enough. Femoral artery sheets should be kept in place. High doses of volatile agents are best avoided. Narcotics with benzodiazepines are advised. Tachycardia is avoided at all costs. Balloon valve low pass. Indications, there should be an inoperable patient, high-risk consent patient, poor LV patient, LV function patient, functioning patient. Contraindications will be LA thrombus or the calcified valves, recent embolic episode, bleeding abdominal pain, mitral regurgitation of moderate uh, grade, pregnancy, Aortic regurgitation. Pacemaker or artificial implantable cardiac devices changes or laser lead extraction. We should know the exact type of device to be known. Conversion to asynchronous mono uh, can be done under local anesthesia or maximum. For uh, implantable cardiac devices testing, Ventricular fibrillation is induced. A small dose of propofol with assisted ventilation can be given. While extraction of leads, tamponade is common. General anesthesia with secured airway is the better choice. Mystic concentrations. There will be a limited access to airway. So IV line circuit invasive monitors should be long. Transducer fix it to the table. Monitored anesthesia care or regional anesthesia or general anesthesia depends on the requirement of the procedure. Spontaneous ventilation may be may at time hinder procedures on abdominal aorta. So these are the subarachnoid block or epidural or CSM continuous finals have been tried. Epidural anesthesia attenuates the stress response and decreases hypercoagulation. Increased hematoma with epidural in thrombolysis patients. And these are all the studies where they have done all these experiments. With diabetes mellitus or chronic renal insufficiency, COPD, or uh, central vascular disease, hypertension, cardio coronary artery disease and congestive heart failure, all the drugs should be readily available. Operating room backup essential should be there always. Chat laboratory, which includes arterial blood gases and analysis, electrolytes, hemoglobin, and activated clock in time. Always there should be a standby of intraiotic balloon angiotic Pediatric cath lab. In 1930, diagnostic pediatric cath cardiac catheterization was done by Castellanos. In 1968, an interventional lab was established by Bashkind and Miller. Recent fetal cardiac interventions have been added to the spectrum. Indications include angiography, uh, uh, electrophysiological studies, 
abnormal case, hemodynamic measurements, balloon angioplasty of congenital lesion, balloon valvotomy, closure of PDA, device closure of ASD and VSD, radio frequency ablation. His contraindications will be history of recurrent fever, there may be severe cardiac failure, limited vascular access, history of allergy, systemic hormone dysfunction, bleeding diathesis. It depends on the demands of the procedure. Motionless patient. So what are the main aim is the motionless patient. Study of hemodynamic state. Abolition of reaction to noxious stimulus. Maintain normal blood gas analysis. Spontaneous respiration of two minutes and rapid recovery. Then you first you should secure an intravenous axis, attach the monitors like ECG, in NIBP, pulse oximeter, etc. Drugs with minimal cardiovascular effects should be preferred. Blood. RBCs, packed RBCs should be kept safety. Radiation safety should be followed. A thorough pre of pre anesthesia evaluation with fasting status. Less than three months of age, there will be no pre medication. Oral medulum of 0.5 milligrams per kg. A retropin of 0.02 milligrams per kg IV. Therapin organ of 0.5 milligrams per kg. No technique has universal acceptance. Ketamine is the most popular drug. IM is 3 to 8 milligrams per kg. IV, 1 milligram per kg. Or orally, 10 milligrams per kg. The following study done by Friesen in 1996 shows that atopin is a mandate and larger doses of less than larger doses for less than six months of age and it affects on pulmonary vascular resistance or control shear. Important considerations. Infants and young children are primarily dependent upon heart rate for the cardiac output. So if heart rate is increased, cardiac output is increased. With severe hypoxemia, numerous adaptations are known to occur. Polycythemia, vasodilization, chronic respiratory alveolosis, etc. A child in congestive heart failure is born to be tachycardic, tachypneic, with reduced skin temperature. So the pre-anesthetic checkup should include determination of cardiorespiratory rhythm, evaluation of cyanosis, symptoms of polycythemia, symptoms of cardiac failure, upper respiratory tract infections, other congenital defects. The management includes investigations, clinical investigations like serum electrolyte, random blood sugar, or necessary the treatment, the child is on treatment for congestive heart failure with left to right shunts or pulmonary hypertension, hemodynamic measurement or repeated with simulation of 100% oxygen. This allows determination of whether the pulmonary vasculature is reactive or not, and whether the pulmonary hypertension is reversible or not. It lacks analgesia, high risk for respiratory depression. There is a higher incidence of hypertension. Interferes with radio ablation. This is required. Narcotics. It may cause post-operative nausea and vomiting. Needs for need for controlled ventilation. It may be causing respiratory depression. 
inhalation improves cavernous facilities. The present it all in 1997. Study tracheal intubation and cardiovascular effects interference with interference with pressure recordings. Increased intracardiac shunt and decreased QP by QS shunt decreases cardiac output with controlled ventilation. This was confirmed in the study by Manners and Cordman in 1969. Local application of MLAC cream in volumes for at least 30 minutes reduces the amount of sedation required. This is a study done by Hogan and Ditol in 2003. Summary. Planning the pre-op and management of the patient undergoing a cardiac or non-cardiac surgery is based on diagnostic information obtained in the lab. So caring for the failed PTC a patient. Caring for a patient undergoing a non cardiac procedure of the mitral valve plasty. Caring for a pediatric patient with heart disease. So these are all the examples why the cardiac anesthetist must have a thorough understanding of all these procedures as well as the data obtained and derived by the invasive cardiologist. So finally, we can we after cardiac catheterization in the cat lab, we have a full detailed report on cardiac structure, function, abnormalities, valves, valve motion abnormalities, perfusion, and the uh, functional status of the heart. So it, so it is uh, it is required for it may it may assess the patient whether the patient is is uh, suitable for the cat lab procedure or patient has to be proceeded with the surgery for the better, better life in future. So cardiac catheterization is an important challenge for anesthesiologists as patients may land up in severe cardiopulmonary distress or arrest which may have to be attended very fast and quick so as to optimize the patient. Thank you. The references which I followed are Cardiac Anesthesia by Joel Kaplan, fourth edition. Anesthesia and the Cardiac Patients of North America Clinics, April edition of 2003. Miller's Test Book of Anesthesia, sixth edition. Worldwide Web, and the references of latest articles, all the articles, recent ones. Cardiac Anesthesia by Joel Kaplan, 4th edition. Miller's Test Book of Anesthesia, 6th edition. Anesthesia of the Cardiac Patients, North America Clinics, April 2003. And all the recent articles from international and national journals of anesthesia. Worldwide Web. Thank you, students, for your patience, your listening talks.
ಇದ್ದೇವೆ ಅವ್ರನ್ನ